This is normally what my husband Eric does. And this is me. After spending the last three months traveling across Australia, we ended up here. The beauty of Tasmania is mesmerizing. And it turned Eric into this. It's so slow! Since I don't have the same passion as him, I decided to take an adventure alone. There's a great bikepacking trail in Tasmania. It's called the Tasmanian Trail. The trail starts at the northern end of the island and finishes at the southern end. The trail distance is about 480 kilometers and over 10 days of bikepacking. I have never done such a long bikepacking trip, but that's what I'm gonna do. Since more than 83% of the trail is gravel, there is a perfect bike for it. It's called a gravel bike. But I don't have one, and renting is expensive. So this is how I'm gonna do it! Before showing my bike and my bike setup, look at this weather! Oh sh It was super windy on day one. Even a stranger was concerned about me. It's been so lovely. This is the worst weather we've had. I know. Months. It's so windy today. Oh, shocking. I'm serious. <laughs> Don't import to Japan. Yeah. Yeah. I completely ignored her warning. Ah, that was windy. <laughs> so this is how I'm gonna do it. My bike, my backpack, two extra packs, and faster tires. Riding a heavy enduro bike on a 10-day bikepacking trip was already unusual. But wearing a full face might have been a little too weird. But this was the only helmet I had. Let's go. Since I took a bus from Hobart to the trailhead in Devonport, it was already 4 in the afternoon. She was actually pretty nice. Just worried about me. And it is. <laughs> Look at the trees, so dancing. And only after one hour into the journey, did I start to regret my decision. Maybe the lady was right, maybe I should have stayed in Devonport. It began to pour. Okay, <laughs> the first day is over. Oh, do you have a tent site? So now I'm nice and cozy, but that was brutal. It was wet and cold, but I had prepared for this. I knew it's gonna be so cold. That's why I brought emergency blanket. And probably I'm gonna use this day one. <sighs> My survival days had begun. This may look not cool, but I really hate sleeping with cold feet. Emergency blanket? So awesome. Contrary to yesterday's weather, day two started with a blue sky. A paved road quickly became a gravel road, and eventually a dirt road. It was a smooth ride. I just followed these yellow signs. I uh, can see a gate. Until a locked fence blocked my way. Oh no. There's a sign over there. I guess they want us to go here. Okay. The yellow sign clearly indicated that I should go in there. I guess I have to unpack. This trail is shared with hikers and horseback riders. So if your horse couldn't jump over the fence, you could ask for the keys to the gate. Since I didn't ask for the keys, I had to go over the fence. I believe mean, it's this way, right? I hope I don't get in trouble. <laughs> oh, horses! Riding across a horse or sheep pasture was fun. But 
But I believe riding on single tracks would be more fun. I found an alternative single track. So, oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take this instead. Before riding the single tracks, let me show you my new gears. For this bikepacking trip, I got the handlebar bag and seat pack. Also, less knobby tires should roll faster. Since I had so much extra weight on my bike, I was a little worried about riding a proper single track. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I'm gonna take it easy. I'm not gonna jump, otherwise I'm gonna break the gears. And oh, this is the jump line. <laughs> Without knowing it, the first trail I picked was a proper jump line. Oh! Wow, this looks nice. Lily pad. I don't see many wooden features in, the, in Australia, so I was kind of surprised. Oh, sh yeah, my back is uh, scratching it. This trail looked like so much fun, and I wanted to enjoy riding it. However, I felt the seat pack rubbing the rear tire, even though the rear shock was locked. I can't really... Oh, yeah, it's scratching. Ah, that's not good. Is this a good idea? Maybe it's not so much. Can I go up? Oh, my God, I can't... Oh, my God. I needed to do something about it. And Eric told me to tilt the seat forward. Okay, green trail. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I adjusted the seat, so it should be better now. A little bit, hopefully. However, my hope was shattered. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's still scratching. i go as soon as possible. Uh, still scratching. Yeah, maybe riding a single track with two backpacks. Uh, not a good idea. I guess I learned the lesson. Okay, day two. Apparently, I rode 58 kilometers today. I thought I could make it to the campsite, but it's still 20 kilometers ahead and it's seven o'clock, so I just gonna camp by the road. That's fine. If I didn't ride that single track, then probably I could have made it to the campsite. Single track is hard. But it wasn't only on the single tracks when my pack got scratched. It was also on the rough, bumpy trails. We do not want to get a hole in the bag, so I'm going to put the Gorilla tape where it's scratching. This seat pack was nuisance, but the other pack actually made me want to cry. This is not good. I think I put too much stuff on that front and it's not good. This mount is touching the flame and when I turn it, it's just uh, scratching. It's not good. And when it scraped the head tube, it also took the Santa Cruz emblem off. It's bad. It was completely my own fault. I didn't secure the mount tight enough. Actually, that was also the reason that the seat pack was bouncing so much. So stupid, no? I should have just rented the bike. The lesson was learned the hard way. Though all my problems seem to be solved. Oh, yes. There's supposed to be a river crossing here. Until a rising river came into my view. Looks deep, no? I guess people go down here, cross over there. Looks like that way. The guidebooks say that if you are worried, I should walk across first. It had been raining on and off, so it was a good idea. But do you know even better idea? I should have brought my gears with me. I just set the camera and return to the bike. I will keep the shoes on. That was painful. <laughs> it was time to cross with my fully packed bike. The water was freezing cold. 
and this was the third time I was crossing. This is a proper river crossing. At some point, the water reached my hips. Hopefully my ear stays dry. It's kind of deep. Huh? And bushwork, really? My body was so cold that it felt like the beginning of hypothermia. I'm cold. I just changed the wet clothes. I'm a bit still shivering. I need to warm up, but now it's that it's raining. Oh, well. And this hell still continued. And this is the second river crossing. At least it's smaller than the first one. But maybe I'm gonna change to the wet clothes. I definitely gonna eat ramen on the other side of the river. And the dream of eating ramen pushed me further into the river. Oh, look, for sure. It looks deep there. Oh. Okay, lunch time. I must admit that I underestimated the difficulty of a gravel ride. I definitely didn't anticipate having to change my pants in an open area. If hypothermia had set in, this would have been the end of the journey. I needed to act quickly. Mm. What? After warming up my clammy body, I was ready once again. Okay, it's time to go. Adding an extra 30 pounds to the already heavy bike was another level. Not only on the climb, but also going downhill. Uh, I don't want to walk, but uh, it's a bit uh, sketchy with this bike set up. Because I cannot put seat down or I cannot uh, lean back. So easy to go over the bar if there was a big rock or something. And here came the steep, loose gravel road. Maybe I change the setup a little bit just for this downhill. So I took the seat back and put it on top of that everything. Now I can lean backwards, so I think it's better, but I cannot see the trail because it's blocking my view. I'm not sure if this is a good idea neither. So I moved the seat back on the top tube. I think it looks better. It was time to set off. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, but this feels better because I can put my butt behind the seat. Okay, backpack is getting uh, tilted. It's not good. Come on, come on, a little bit more. You can do it. <laughs> okay, that's good enough, huh? Yeah, there's blackberries. I made it to the bottom. Again, I couldn't make it to the campsite. So this is the campsite for tonight. Oh, I think I miscalculate my plans. I plan to ride 50K every day and I'm already tired, but I'm still here alive. And I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Everything had been tough so far. But at least, Australian animals had been treating me rather nicely. When I opened the tent door in the morning, there was a wallaby greeting. There was even weird birds singing a song for me. Ow, 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 Rapper? But in fact, some of them could kill me. I just run into a tiger snake like this thickness, big one. He was just sunbathing there. I was just coming from downhill, so I had a speed and I almost hit it. But luckily, the snake surprised then just run into the bush. Oh, that was scary. After this incident, 
I was extremely paranoid. Hello, snake. Hello, snake. Hello, 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 hello. Ikupe is coming. Stupid snake. Go away. Now I'm so nervous. Oh my god, this one's. Hey, snake. After surviving the snake forest, a fish and chips from a roadhouse was exactly what I needed. Especially since it could be that the most difficult part of the trail was still yet to come. That was a little traffic jam. But I don't see many people doing the same track, so it was good to see them. After meeting five riders on the road, I had a now entered the serious part of the Tasmanian Trail. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. The trail changed immediately. Walk. The slope was steep. I don't even know how horseback riders could go up some sections. I don't think I can go up that steep section with a bike fully packed. So I have to take everything apart and then go up. If it were only steep slopes, I could have handled them better. But it was also extremely rocky. It was only seven kilometers to the top. But I felt as if this hell would never end. So I stopped. So I just came across this cave and people making fire and probably sleeping here too. What do you think? Is it a good idea to sleep here? Looks cool, no? It's a bit rocky here. This maybe not the best camping site, but uh, you know, I never slept in a cave, so hopefully there will be no ghost. There was no ghost, but it's better to check my shoes in the morning just in case there's a spider sleeping in them. As a matter of fact, bikers were advised to take an alternate route through this section due to the rough terrain. So I knew this was going to be a hiker bike. But I didn't know how difficult even a hiker bike would be. I knew this was not the best idea, but also I didn't want to ride on the road with cars. More likely to hit by a car and die. This is not easy. Okay, I've got really great idea, but also desperate idea. This is hard because my bike is heavy and it's about two kilometers to the top. So I just gonna bring my only gear first and then come back to get my bike. Maybe that's faster and probably easier but also desperate <laughs> because this is not working I really want to know how a horse rider can handle this trail even walking is harder while I was struggling I heard human voices coming up the trail you guys came this way I came across the guys from the day before I thought yeah. you were taking the road. No, no. Do we look like a road type? No. Yeah, but uh, I don't know this was a good idea. Yeah, it's... It <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's, I'm not only one, you know? <laughs> and seeing my old friends gave me energy. The slope became gentle. My bike was fully packed again. What? What's that thing? <laughs> I guess this is the... I'm supposed to go over this rug. It's not gonna happen. Or maybe. There was no easier way to go over the huge tree. So I might as well use the method they devised. Go in the hole. Oh, my hands are not long enough. Oh, 
how do horses go over this one? Okay. Okay, come now. <sighs> so heavy. Oh. Come on. Okay, I have to go over this one. Oh my god. That was ridiculous. The last obstacle had been defeated. And finally, I reached the top. Oh my god! We made it! Oh, that was tough. Next time, maybe I just gonna follow the guideline, you know? <laughs> Take the road. Ah, uh, don't worry about the guideline. <laughs> now, I was at the highest point of the trail. The journey from here was nice and smooth. It's gonna be mostly on the road and hopefully mostly it's downhill. I missed the turn and I arrived here. Isn't it cool? I could actually enjoy the stunning view of the Great Lake. This is not the only time I made it to a campsite, but also this campsite has shower, so I bought shampoo. After five days of sweat and tears, it was the most joyful thing I could have done in my life. That was just awesome shower. Now I'm nice and clean. And I'm gonna go have dinner. So you can't blame me for not taking any footage of my meal. All I can say is that it brought me back to life. Okay, see you guys later. Bye. Oh yeah. Yesterday I had a really good dinner. Today I've got energy. About halfway through the journey, I realized that the most critical thing to completing 10 days of bikepacking was providing fuel to my body. I got this Bronte special at the Bronte Park and I'm gonna eat the Bronte special by the Bronte Lagoon. And I got to burn the fuel. Today, for the first time, I surpassed my daily goal and probably I rode more than 80 kilometers. It was a lot of downhill, but I'm kind of tired. So it's still four o'clock, but I'm gonna camp just right here. The prospect of riding 480 kilometers was intimidating at first. There were so many uncertainties, but as I pedaled more, I learned new things. This trail looked like a place where snakes like to hang out. I got smarter than on day four. Oh, it's getting steep. I learned how to deal with my bike setups. Okay, another river crossing. There were many obstacles on the way. One mountain is done. Two more to go. But every time I went over them, one by one, I felt I became a little stronger. <sighs> Things could get a little tough. So I think I was just preparing. This area is a mess. Preparing for even bigger obstacles. It's pretty windy today. I was about to go over the Wellington mountain range, and the mountain weather was always unpredictable. It started to rain. It was so hot and sunny yesterday. But there was no need to cry over something I couldn't control. So many ponds. Eventually, the sun would come shining on me. So all I needed to care about was where to sleep, where to get water, and where to find the most greasy food. Mm. So the last campsite is 
right next to the trail. <laughs> I'm just hoping nobody's coming up tonight. Without knowing it, I had already pedaled over 500 kilometers in the last nine days, which was more than I had planned at the beginning. Good morning. I had a hard time sleeping because I was paranoid those huge ants gonna rip my tent apart because they want to get my pizza in the tent. But I don't think there's a hold, so my pizza is safe with me. So I ate cereal already for breakfast, but I'm still hungry, so I'm gonna eat pizza. Pizza! And somehow, I'm always hungry. This journey started as a nightmare. Oh, sh this is not easy. Oh, poor my bike. But I came to love the life on the road. Big brownish coffee and rice. And the last piece of the pizza was the reason I could pedal the last 25 kilometers. I can see the ocean. I arrived in Dover. This is the end of the Syrian Trail. Nice! I completed one of the most challenging bikepacking trails in Australia. Now my limit has expanded a little more, so I can go on next adventure. But before that, I have to go back to Eric. As the Japanese say, the journey doesn't end until you get back home. What was supposed to take two days of pedaling took only four hours thanks to modern technology. You did it! Oh yeah! Give me a hug. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more exciting adventures. Thank you for watching and see you next time.